You know, people have told me, how can you wear a dress all the time? It just feels so uncomfortable. Like, you know, it's comfortable. I, I like my, I like my hoo-ha to have some I air. I love it. She's like, oh yeah, that feels I good. breathe. <laughs> Okay, Zalata, everybody knows about dressing for success. I feel like we've been hearing this since, I mean, gee, since I can remember, at least in my teenage years. But what does that actually mean? What does dress for success mean to you? Dress for success means dressing for the right purpose. Mm. Okay. Can you hone in? And being in full expression of who you are while you're doing it, because that's truly the definition of style. Mm -hmm. A lot of people either dress wrong for the occasion, like there are literally the wrong ways to dress for the occasion, or... Are you saying no neon at funerals? Is that where you're going? You can wear neon at my funeral. Okay. <laughs> and cheetah print. Cheetah. You know what? I would love for you to show up a neon in cheetah. I would do that just to honor you and never wear it any other time. But you have some pure really honor. amazing uh, Christian Louboutins that are neon. You're right, I do. Can you wear those? I do. I love those. Uh, I need you to show everyone the shoe that you're wearing today. Oh, this one's one of my favorites, dude. It, for everyone listening, it this is a holographic spiked Christian Libaton shoe that is to die it's for. It's yummy. I'm like, oh. It, it is just yummy. yummy. It's so delicious. And when you see it in pictures, they glow so bright and all the little studs my husband hates these because if i accidentally kick him under the table like it, it doesn't feel great i'm like well don't say anything stupid <laughs> he's not into that type of fetish he's not like uh -huh. maybe if it was in the bedroom but it's like at dinner i'm tired of getting poked by your shoes he's like honey <laughs> calm down chill <laughs> anyway i think you kind of hit the nail on the head how do you decide what you should wear I mean, that was a huge thing for me. I went from a bakery to full-time outside sales position when Charles and I decided to open our construction company together. And that was just a whole nother world. I had never really thought about like, what do you go visit people in, in construction? You know, uh, they're all wearing jeans and hard hats. And that was not what I was going to be wearing. <laughs> No, 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 no hard hat. It's for me. Have you seen hat head with Persian hair? It's not cute. I'm like, no, just don't do it. So I think that was a big lesson for me. How about you? When did you start to realize I really need to pay attention to what I'm wearing? So it didn't really shift for me until I went from running coaching company fitness into going into big tech and going into robotics. Ooh, tell me more. Because you can imagine, it's quite a difference in how you dress between fitness and big tech. Yeah. And what happened was I had originally an idea for a robotics company. I made a deck. I had a co-founder who's built a $150 million business before. The team was solid. The idea was solid. And I started pitching it to investors in New York City. And after a couple unsuccessful months, and for me to be unsuccessful at something for a couple of months is a long time. And at that point, you like have to take inventory of what you're doing wrong because I gone through a couple really good investment firms and I wasn't really getting the investments. Traction. I was getting dates. <laughs> I wasn't walking away with what I want. I was walking away with something, but just not what I want. It's like going in to get a donut and you really want the chocolate sprinkles and they have strawberry. It's like, great. So instead of getting investments, I was getting dates and a really good girlfriend of mine said, have you considered that it's not necessarily your idea, your product or your team? It's just of how you look. And I looked down and I was like, what's wrong with how I look? I look fire right now. What are you talking about? And I'm wearing a leather skirt with over knee black boots and like this kind of sexy top. And she's like, what, ki what kind of attention do you expect from an investor or those around you when you're dressed like this? And I realized I wasn't dressed for respect. I was dressed for attention. Mm -hmm. So because I was in a very attention focused um, career at the time, right? Like I was like, oh, I'm this podcaster. I'm this person. And um, it really was not, um, you know, it was not in my wheelhouse to know how to dress for those kind of rooms. Mm -hmm. So for me, again, like I say this over and over again, form follows function. So the function that I needed those clothes to serve were no, were not dates. They were investments. So I really had to look at what I was doing. I, I hired a stylist. I, I you know, I, I taken some proactive steps, but nobody taught me how to do it. Mm, you had to figure it out on your own. 
Who was your guide into fashion? You know, that's a really funny question. But what I really want to sum up that I heard from you was it was important about the feels. What feels am I giving people? Mm. Is that what it was? Because yeah, elaborate I mean, on that. It, to me, that's the most important thing you can do to connect. That's your business card. That's your, you make your first impression in under seven seconds. And whether we want to believe it or not, that first impression means a lot. So what is the impression that I'm giving? And the way that you give impressions is by feels. So what feels does this outfit evoke in you? You know, is it playful? Is it flirty? Is it fun? Is it serious? Is it hardcore? Is it, we're going out, you know, shooting hogs today? <laughs> like, we're shooting hogs yeah. today, honey. What kind of feels are we, are we conjuring up here? I think that's where I had to shift my mindset. Because before I got into construction, it was always about being cute. And like, oh, did you look cute? Okay, great. You're, you won. You looked cute. Sweet. Um, but in construction, I had a much bigger agenda. I had to not only appeal to these men, I had to make sure that they took me seriously. So I had to be flashy enough to catch their attention and then dressed in a manner that not only did I catch their attention, I didn't catch dates. I caught respect. So that was a whole different ballgame than anything I had ever really thought of or processed before. And I will never forget going shopping for this new wardrobe that I needed because the stuff that I wore at the bakery wasn't going to work. I mean, it was a cute LaBella shirt, not working. Um, so Charles and I, I saw I some wedges. Yeah, there, there were, were wedges. There, there were wedges. Because <laughs> like I said, cute denim skirt wedges. I think all wedges need to be burned. I, I don't do them anymore. I don't love them. Because they're an ugly shoe. It's not even ugly to me. They feel wobbly. Like I have never found a pair of wedges that I felt sure-footed in. So I've never sense. found a pair of wedges when I was like, I look chic. What's up? I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, there are, I've seen cute ones, but I, for some reason, they're just not for me. But anyway, we're, we're going shopping. And Luke, you can leave your wedges hate in comments if you want to. I'm That's here for it. <laughs> here for it. Do what makes you happy from Alicia. <laughs> I like literally when it comes to style, I'm, uh, Zolata is your go-to girl. However, I have learned that dressing for the scenario is really important. And so that's what we were doing. Charles and I went shopping and he asked me a couple key questions. He asked me what I was trying to make people feel. Who did I want to, who and how did I want to be remembered by? And I really had to think about those things. And then how do I attract those people? So what I came to was my sales position that I was in then was I needed to be very form fitting, very um, well known, well respected designers, and then just enough pop of something that would grab people's attention, but not take it on down the girly foo foo route. And I was just shocked at what altering those few things did for credibility and doors that I was able to get into. What's a, what was the first impression? Do you remember the first time that you went on site and it was a big difference? Yeah, it, it, it was huge. Um, there's a couple memories that stick out to me. One is uh, I would wear a lot of just monochrome colors, dresses, because dresses evoke feelings of femininity. Mm -hmm. You it just is what it is. Uh, and so I learned that dresses got really good responses. Dresses that were uh, always going to be around, you know, that little black dress, but classy, it's never going to expire, if you will. Um, so little dresses, none of them were very super colorful or anything like that. I always popped in my color with my shoes and my purses so that it wasn't over the top, but it was enough to create interest. And I remember going to go see this VP who knew nothing about us and cared nothing about us. And I understand sales. You get a lot of no's, right? But I plopped my pretty little Louboutin purse on his secretary's desk and instantaneously, oh my God. And this, like, we were best friends in two seconds over a purse. And she went and got him. And I was like, oh, that were my assistant. <laughs> Literally, because you liked my purse, you forgot to play doorkeeper. And I got an immediate meeting, which turned out to go really well. But it was like over a purse. I've had those yeah. door opening moments with style. With fashion. With style. Because it evokes feeling. Exactly. It was about how I looked. Yeah. We needed a hotel uh, ho client to test our prototype in. Oh, cool. So this is still in robotics company. So my, my co-founder and I, we have an idea. We made a thing. But now we need to test it. We have a minimum viable product, and now we need a hotel to agree to put this thing in there, and it's a robot, right? So it was this, a couple of years ago, it was this really big shift. Yeah. Now I feel like we see robots delivering, and we're a lot more okay with it in a 
post um, uh, lockdown kind of times because automation is a little bit more. AI has been fully accepted. AI, AI has it. been, <laughs> AI has been, I don't know, fully, but accepted for sure. So we need a hotel client. Yeah. And I sent out a couple emails and I got crickets, mm -hmm. right? Hey, I would like to put a robot in your hotel. Would you let, would you give me the keys to all of your back doors <laughs> and talk to all of your housekeepers who are going to consider this a competitor to them? And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to manage this? And I was like, you know what? Good old fashioned way. So I put on, I have this incredible dark green colored with sheen uh, midi skirt mm -hmm. and a it's a perfectly matched set to where the blouse looks the same. I put a beige camel coat. I grabbed my Chanel bag and like these stunning Gucci heels that I got that were my first gateway drug into fashion. I grabbed my co-founder and his little Merrells, right? Because what is it with all the tech dudes wearing the, the Merrell shoes? I love them. And I just strutted my way into the biggest hotel in Dallas. And I was like, hi, I would like to speak to the um, director of the hotel. Yeah. And they were like, okay. They looked, she looked me up and down. Did you put your Chanel purse on her counter? <laughs> I don't remember if I put this, but I was like, I was like strutting. I was really going for it. I was imagining that this was my moment. And I was like, ooh, not skipping a beat, right? And of course my legs are shaking, shaking. right? I'm like, I would like to speak to the general manager. And she just said, okay. And you're like, wait, was it that easy? And next thing you know, I had... Not even 10 minutes later, I was in the back of the hotel talking to housekeepers, talking to people about their lockers and how do they wash this and looking at their mops. My co-founder, I thought he, I thought he was like, he saw magic and miracles, right? That's when every man is like, why was I born a man? Look what they just did. <laughs> Since that day, he has never been to a meeting with me without a dress shirt on. Hmm. So he learned something too. He learned something, but also in the same light, when we started doing testing, I needed to wear baggy jeans and a t-shirt in order to relate to all of the workers that I was now interacting with in order to build credibility with them. Mm -hmm. So clothes became this amazing way for me to open doors and relate and connect with people. So you feel like fashion is a conduit. Fashion is 100% a conduit. Nice. Yeah, I have to agree with that. That's a conduit of feelings for me. Mm. So it's the way for me to help bring you into whatever feeling I want to give you. Tell me about that. You're really big on feels. You're the first person I've heard that from. Where did that come from? I think I realized that I can create magic for people if I can help cultivate their feelings into one way or another. So if I want to help you have a really good time and I know you, then I know how to create the feelings around you that will evoke the feelings I'm looking for in you. So of course I can't control you and force you to feel the feeling, but if I can create all of the scenarios around you that give you the ability to easily step into whatever feeling I would love for you to feel, then it's very simple. It happens naturally. It, how has that supported you in business? I really think that that's how I have grown companies 4,000% in five years. I, I do not think I'm a good salesperson. It's not, I, I don't get off seeing someone sign a contract I put in front of them. It means nothing to me. What I really get off on is, are we going to be friends in five years? Are you going to know that if you need something, you can trust me and call me? That's what I care about. So I wouldn't say I'm a good salesperson, but I would say that understanding what a person's needs are and what they need to feel to feel safe, because I can see that and understand it and then present those things. It helps us to connect. Mm. You're also an incredible gift giver. Oh, thank you. That's because I'm I, I'm doing the same thing with gifts. I'm like, I want her to feel this way. What is it that would make Zolata feel appreciated? What is it that would light Zolata up? A necklace might light you up, whereas one of my other girlfriends would be like, where the fuck would I wear that? <laughs> like, I don't have anywhere to wear that. It doesn't mean anything to them. So they don't light up. You don't give what makes you get feels. You give what makes someone else get feels. And that's a big shift in how sometimes people give gifts yeah. So gifts are my love language. I don't oh, know if you know this. I this is my number that. one love uh, language. Love language. The way that you like to receive or the like the way that you like to give love. I like to receive gifts. Gifts. Mm -hmm. And acts of service is my give. Yeah. So I will always look I study a person mm -hmm. and then I see what they like and how I can make it better. Oh, mm -hmm. I like that. And my receiving is gifts. Yeah. And 
you know, there's a, a thing on both sides of it, right? Like if you nail a gift to me, oh my God, like it just overfilled me with this extraordinary feeling. But if you gave me a gift that is a total miss, yeah, like somebody gave me stationery. Oh, like a, like a journal, like a journal that you would, uh, put the actual dates in. Oh, right. Like, yeah. And I'm like, well, you don't know anything about me. I manage my calendar and Google drive. And if you knew me even a little bit, I always write in, oh my gosh, I'm going to sound so snobby right now. I write in limited edition moleskin notebooks only. Why? Because I stack them. Oh, so they are memory of yeah. all the things that I had done and they stack perfectly the same. Oh, beautiful. So if you knew that about me and that was a person who was close to me, who would see me journal all the time. Yeah. And I they just completely missed it. They just completely missed it. And yeah. it's not to say like, this is definitely not a malicious thing, but it definitely kind of gave me like this icky feeling in me. my stomach. Do you don't even know me? <laughs> when all they were seeing is she likes to journal. So I'll give her something to journal with. Exactly. A yeah. shock. It was a man. Yeah. <laughs> well, what can we say? That's our job as women. <laughs> like we're the feelers, mm. ultimate feelers. That's, that's what we we're conduits of. So that's what we give. That's what we create. That's why so many women are so good at creative design. They make their homes beautiful. They make, can you walk into a place and you can feel that it's warm and welcoming? Yeah. And it's just like, wow, someone created that, right? I'm not saying men can't. I'm just saying women have this tendency to be good at it. Well, the feminine is an incredible weaver and an incredible glue to all things. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's an amazing Gift. thing about women. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's really cool to be able to see it in, in action. I think, how, how do we get on gift giving from fashion? I mean, I, no I, I idea, love but... being given fashion too. So babe shoes. <laughs> so li literally banned me from buying more shoes, but somehow. So your husband gives you, does your husband give you gifts? Does Charles give you clothing items, jewelry? He What's your not, gift thing? Yeah. He is not a gift giver. He's a, um, Charles and I would never work out. Uh, yeah. No, you would feel so unloved. <laughs> you shouldn't give me. But then again, I'm the type that is impatient, like seriously impatient. So if I want something, I'm going to buy it anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, Charles is more of an experience giver. So he creates ultimate experiences for us. And he's actually really good at thinking through how would this make her feel in an experience? But if you ask him to do that with a gift, like a piece of something now, he's a quality time giver. Yes. Yeah, that that's a sense. good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good way to put it. Yeah. But he did buy my first pair of Louboutins and I thought he was insane. I was like, you, you're insane. Why would you spend $700 on a pair of shoes when I could get 10 pairs for that? <laughs> I'm and like, I saw you with a suitcase of Louboutins yeah, yeah. now. Oh, I know. Well, now he's like, enough, enough, enough. And I'm like, well, there's still one little spot. And he's like, oh, my. So now I give the shoes away a so I can <laughs> put new ones in. Um, but no, he taught me that you have to dress for where you want to be, mm. not where you are. So look at the people that are where you want to be. I, I'm not saying people are superficial, but I am saying that when someone sees you in the first seven seconds, I know what you're wearing. So I know where, where you are monetarily. And I know if you understand how to handle money, like, could I trust you with my money because you have the equal amount of money or somewhere similar? I see that you're spending money on the same types of things I spent money on. So then I can make an assumption that you at least have that amount of disposable income. So if you're talking to me, I understand kind of where to place you. That doesn't apply across the board, but in business, it's been a good, pretty good, like, put your finger on it. And we're not saying this is a right thing or a wrong no. thing. No. We are saying play this up to your advantage. Yes. Like, I'm not going to be arguing social constructs and how an impression is made and how we unconsciously file different things in our mind. I'm not after this conversation today. I'm after really practical applications yeah. of how you can dress for success and how you can use the information that's provided right now to really place you in the rooms that you want to be in. Exactly. To open doors. Exactly. So those, you know, you want to know the key to those Louboutins, why he did it? Because the VPs that I was going to go visit, their wives all wore them. Trust me. Those men didn't give two shits about Louboutins. They probably couldn't even say his name, but they recognized that red bottom soul when I turned around and walked out and they thought that we had money. Because they've seen their wives on them. They know what their wives' credit cards were. I'm like, I know what you spent on those shoes. And so that was an immediate connection. Oh, we're the same. Whether or not they consciously or unconsciously did that, Charles and I were now in the same group as them. Because we had the same stuff. And so used to your advantage. It's an ultimate hack. 
it is a hack. And let me tell you, those two, I got two pairs of Louboutins that day. I got a nude pair and a black pair. And those bitches got worn the F out. Like, poor Dinos. I would take them to them. Please resell them. Please re... And it, it didn't matter. That's what I could afford. That's what we could do. That's what was in the budget. And those were the two colors that you have to have. Those are basics in your closet. Keep them, you know, looking good. And then I just wore them every other day. <laughs> There's a common misconception that being stylish, fashionable is expensive. Oh, I love this one. And the truth is this, when you have a capsule wardrobe, a staple wardrobe, you have your two expensive pairs of shoes that are a gateway and mm -hmm. they're serving you. Don't look at the cost of the item. Look at the cost per wear. Yes. So if I wore these shoes 365 days out of, you know, in a year and I wore them 200 days out of the year, then I'm going to price it out per wear. Right. And then we start to see that those shoes I got at Target that were $55, I now have 14 pairs of shoes, but they all are dead in less than, you know, six months. You get what you pay for. You huh? get what you pay for. And when we had Walter on the show, he was saying, if you buy good pieces... Yeah, they're going to last. They're going to last. And you don't get rid of them. You take really good care of them. Since I became more fashion conscious, more style conscious, my dry cleaning bill has gone up for sure. Mm -hmm. And so my cobbler is my best friend. Yeah. I love him. And But the truth is, these items have been in my closet for a lot longer. And I spend a lot less money on clothes now. Because I because you have those staples. And the the they aren't going anywhere. It's like your little black dress, your black blazers, your white blazer, your, it's a collection that you build. And the other thing that I love about this is someone taught me this a few years ago, and she actually taught it to me about decorating your house, but it applies for what you wear too. She calls it Gucci and Gap. So you have some items that are staple and these are like the Louboutins. Those were Gucci to me. That was expensive. And originally I thought unnecessary. Um, but then when you have those staple pieces, you can tie them with pieces that are more reasonably priced and no one can tell. You just look gorgeous all around. They're not picking everything apart. It's about the whole package. So how do you put those together so that what you're wearing is intriguing and eye catching, but it also works in your budget? I teach that in my style course. It's mm -hmm. called Expressed, mm -hmm. and I've taught it to so many women. I didn't have a concept for it, Gucci and Gap. Gucci I and think Gap. it's perfect. I'm the queen of having a couple really expensive pieces, but then there are certain, even fast fashion brands that fit me, like Zara fits me really well because they just... Your body type. My body type. And I do buy certain pieces from Zara, even though I'm not a fast fashion person, but I know that they have been in my closet for three, four years now. Like their blazers fit me perfectly. Mm -hmm. Not any different than McQueen. I hate to say it mm -hmm. because it's just how they're tailored for me. Of course, I'd rather have a McQueen. Hello. Of course, who wouldn't? <laughs> Honey. Who wouldn't? And it's, it doesn't have to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's what you pair it back with. It's how you pair back the outfit. How you, What shoes do you pair it with? I would love, for me, a really good example of this is a cute summer dress that you have to have. I don't care where it came from. Zara, wherever you're shopping at. And it's just adorable. You know it's not going to be around next season. Like, it, this thing isn't made to last, right? But you pair it back with a gorgeous pair of nude stilettos, Louboutin, Prada, and all of a sudden that outfit is elevated. Because no one knows what who the dress is, but everyone knows who the shoes are. It's easy to tell. Absolutely. And I love that you just said this. There are certain things that are on trend. Yes. This particular season. Mm -hmm. And there are certain pieces that are timeless. Yes. So, and there are certain pieces that are your hero pieces. Ooh, I so, heard anyone say that before. Tell me. I have hero. a hero piece that people know me by. So when I DJ, I have that um, Harley Davidson vintage jacket that you've seen me wear. Mm -hmm. That's my hero piece. Because so your statement piece that fully evokes you. Yes. Fully evokes me that people know me by. Ooh. I will wear it over and over again and people just go, oh yeah, that's what we expect to see her in. So that's part of your persona. Part of my persona became mm. part of my, part of my identity, part of who I am. I love that. And do you have, do you apply that in different positions. For instance, part of my persona of, as wife of Charles, whenever we go out, I'm going to glam it up. Like I want rhinestone purses. I want, and that's just what I do when I go out on dates with him. But when I go to a business meeting, that is not what's going to happen there. So do you change it up? 
So that's your staple looks. Mm -hmm. So I, when I teach fashion, I talk about, by the way, this is some serious Vogue secrets right now. I learned this from a style, from a Vogue stylist. So I want everybody to grab a pen and paper and I'm going to dish out some real good fashion advice right here. So if you want you to have a signature style, Mm -hmm. and I feel like if you have an option between being fashionable and trendy, Where somebody else dictates your fashion unconsciously, a lot of the times fast fashion brands like Instagram with fashion over or whatever, and you want to transition into having your own style. Like build out you. Like build out you and truly the essence of who you are with the hero pieces and your your statement collection, right? You want to look at seven looks, seven days. So let's say my seven looks on Monday look like this, on Tuesday look like this, on Wednesday look like this, on Thursday look like this, on Friday, this is my outfit staple. So let's say on Monday, I wear uh, suits. Okay. On Tuesday, I wear anything in a color red. On Wednesday, I wear a Gucci pattern. On Thursday, I have something that's tulle. On Friday, I wear sequin. So, and so on and so forth. So your, your fifth one would be sixth one would be leather and seventh one would be lace. Okay. So I would see you in these staples consistently all the time. I'm like, oh, cool. She has a monochrome red look. Mm -hmm. So it's monochrome either trousers and top or monochrome red dress or monochrome top and cropped trousers or something like that. So when I start to see you consistently, I, it's like, oh yeah, of course that's so her. Mm -hmm. I was a lot of wearing tool. That's so her. Mm Mm-hmm. So, or she's wearing, like, she looks like a rock star. Oh yeah, that's very Zlata. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens is you unconsciously imprint in people what you want them to believe and think about you. Yeah. And even if you don't realize you're doing it, you're doing it. Even if. So if you're wearing yoga pants all day, every day. Even if. Then I think you're a yoga teacher. Exactly. Uh, Or you're um, a busy mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's really amazing way to to style leggings. And I believe leggings can be a pillar or a look because leggings can be styled with like a crop top and a bomber or a suit jacket. There's so many ways to do it, ways to to do leggings in the cool way now. Yeah, (laughs) they really made it pretty cool, though. I can show you I can pull up a picture of how not to do leggings. Oh, you want to do that? Oh, I want to do that. Do that. Where's your picture? Come on. Let me see it. Where is it? So this is this is the days when Zlata had no idea how to dress. See, you were cute. You I was adorable. Cute. Look at that pageant thing. <laughs> so let's look at all the fashion mistakes are going on right now. We have some serious two thousands fashion happening. So do, for do those, you have more pictures? Oh are no, this was the. Oh, I'm like sweet. I'm I all can't. In, I can't no, that suffer was with you more. No. Yeah, I went from this to this. Wow. So. Let's look I mean, at I wasn't the suffering. I was enjoying. <laughs> let's highlight some of the hero pieces that we have in that outfit. So I am wearing leggings. Okay. And what you're not seeing on my feet, I'm also wearing cropped booties. Ooh. Right. So okay. leggings and booties. I'm just really going early 2000s here. Of course, we have a workout top because I'm a fitness person. Why would I have anything else that I could wear? A really sexy bra. Hello. And then the necklace. It's the necklaces. I'm like, but why the necklaces? So. uh, Was that to dress up the outfit? Do you remember early 2000s had the necklaces and the poofs that we did? Do you remember we were teasing the poofs? Were you a teasing the poof kind of gal? Mm, Like minimally, just a bump. Oh, I was bumping hard. Were you bumping hard? I was bumping hard. I was bumping tall and. Uh, uh, it was uh, that tease uh, was teasing, baby uh, I girl. Hate teasing my hair now. I'm like, oh, uh, please don't. Uh. My gosh, that's how not to do leggings. Yeah. So where leggings are a part of your identity, and you just have no idea how to what to pair them back with. What to pair them back with? There are many ways to style outfit pieces like that. So if you want to unconsciously create a look that you want to be perceived by. Mm-hmm. Those seven days, seven, as, yeah. yeah, perceived yeah. as seven days, seven looks yeah. is the gateway to do it. You can do it by uh, texture. Mm-hmm. You can do it by designer. So texture meaning like plaid, houndstooth mm-hmm. or something like that. You can do it by designer, Chanel, Gucci, because there's certain patterns, right? Mm-hmm. You can do it by color. You can do it by fabric. So there's many different ways to become playful with your outfit. And seven days, seven looks is the way to do it. No, I like that. So if you have those seven days, seven looks, do you always stick in that? Say, for instance, Mondays is leather for me. 
um, bad boss, whatever. Bad boss. Yeah. Well, yeah. Whip sound. Well, I You've been a anyway. bad boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so say you do leather on Mondays. <laughs> yes. Um, would you, you try to repeat that every Monday? Like so, some type of leather? So uh, fashion style is connected to a day. Okay. I just connected to, okay, cool. Let's say any day of the week or any event I want to go to, I open my lookbook of seven looks and I can pick from one, like either of them. Okay. I like it. So it's a look more as a directive. Like, exactly. hey, pull in these things. But the best way to start getting organized on how to get those going is look at them by day of the week mm -hmm. because it will give you more of an idea of what you actually wear. Mm. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try that. I'll get back with you and let you know how my days of the week go. My days of the week go. Uh, there's a really cool um, Vogue on Vogue YouTube. Haley Bieber, Ashley Graham, they all did seven looks, seven looks type of video on Vogue. So oh, if you cool. wanted to really dive into that, you can check it out or you can check it out in my course. Oh, cool. Dude, I love that. I think that's a, it would probably be really cool to see it in action. Like what did they do with it? How did they do it? So one of your pillars is definitely glitter, mm -hmm. like definitely a lot of sparkles, a lot of shine. So that's one of yours. Oh, one of mine for sure. For sure. Nice. Also ruffles. Oh, I love ruffles. Can you give me a good... I'm a dress girl. I, You're a dress girl. If you will just let me wear a dress every day, I, almost every day I would. Was They're, it always like that? Hmm. Uh, no, I did those like low rider jeans for a while. What was that? The low night. rider jeans? Like what was that? Early 2000s? That's still Early 2000s was the worst fashion. I feel like it really was. And I feel like a lot of people are still stuck in early 2000s fashion. Are and they? it's still on Pinterest. Really? And I'm like, do not look for outfit inspo on Pinterest because it's something that bloggers pinned five years ago that you're still repeating. Oh, that you are sourcing from the past. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you know what? You gave me a really good tip once that I, I really found intriguing and applicable to look through, for instance, Vogue or whatever bizarre, whatever magazine you enjoy, and really just look at the outfits, not to buy it, not to anything, but study what they're doing with them, study how they're pairing them back, and then think about what items you have in your closet that relate to those same ones. It doesn't have to be the exact same t-shirt or the exact same denim jacket. It has to have the same feel. That's what we're, <laughs> it's all about clothes. It's feels. So does it feel the same when you pair them together? I call that training your eye. I love that. So you're Any training your that? eye. If you want to train your eye to feel more fashionable, feel more stylish and do it more on a budget, mm -hmm. then look through El Bazaar, Glamour, some of the top fashion influencers that you like. And then you can put together certain outfits that look very similar because you're now unconsciously training yourself to recognize what looks classic, what looks beautiful. If you look at Princess Diana's outfits from years ago, they're still classic and beautiful. And if you train your eye enough, you're going to start noticing these things, whether they're on sale at Ross or they're at sale in Newman Marcus or they're the recent thing at net porte for example. Mm -hmm. So you need to subconsciously know how to how to pair those clothes together and train your eye. Yeah, train your eye to classics. I think that was a really big lesson for me too, to understand that if you will, sometimes classics I think can be perceived as a little bit boring. They're safe and boring, right? That's why they're classics, but it's how you pair them. What do you put with them? How do you spice them up? But if you have those classics, that's what gives you all the options. When all you buy is the fresh fashion, whatever just came out, then you start to, you're not only are you getting rid of a lot of it, um, you start to look like maybe you don't know what your style is. So people don't know what to expect from you. And unconsciously, I think it makes them uncomfortable when they're trying to get to know you. And every time they see you, you're just a completely, it feels like different person, different version of you, especially if it's the same type scenario. So if I'm coming out to see you at your office and I saw you last week and I saw you this week and every time I'm one time I'm in leather and then the next time I'm in baggy jeans, you're like, who is this person? <laughs> I can't place what they're doing here. It happens a lot because of the pressure of fast fashion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people spend a lot of time on Instagram. Mm -hmm. A lot of women spend a lot of time on Instagram. And there's so much pressure to be new. There's so much pressure to, we feel safe and we feel included when we are on trend as women. Mm. Because we're like, well, I now fit in because everybody's wearing these bondage dresses and two piece things. And now I, I, I'm a part of this girl gang if I dress like this. Mm -hmm. And there's so much pressure. Think about how much money 
fast fashion brands like Zara or Fashion Nova are pumping out on a daily basis, sending clothes to influencers that cost 50 cents to make and, you know, $26 to sell. The CEO of Fashion Nova just bought the most expensive home on the West Coast, which is $160 million. It's called The One. Wow. So, and I'm like, oh, I know that house. Charles and I watched it for like an architecture thing. That house is badass. It's so cool. Yeah. The One is very, very cool. But it just tells us how much fast fashion clothes has actually been sold. So don't feel the pressure to constantly be on trend. Mm -hmm. Don't feel the pressure that, Whatever is being fed to me by the external sources that paid for advertising, I have to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. Because your classics, your looks, your pillars is what you're going to be recognized by. And that's the story you're telling about yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I think that's that's so good, Z. Hmm. Any other fashion tips that you have that you'd like to share? I'm full we're of all ears. Tips, you I'm know? Like we're all ears. You know, let's hit on jewelry, like accessories, jewelry, purses, shoes. How do you do those things? Where do you make your investments at? What are your major tips there? Major tips are very similar mm -hmm. to how I do my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that I would do jewelry is the same way. Where are my hero pieces? Mm -hmm. Where are my staples? What is it that I wear constantly? And what are the pieces that I play with? that add more character and more joy and more fun. I have a rule that I only purchase, like my hero pieces are only in gold mm -hmm. um, and in silver only in those, and, and the gemstones are precious stones, obviously, um, because they last longer. Mm -hmm. So I have some Cartier pieces, I have some Omega pieces that mean something to me. Mm -hmm. Also, I celebrate every accomplishment that has happened in my life by a piece of jewelry. I really like that. Charles does that with guns. I kid you not. He's like, that this when this happens, I'm going to get this gun. I'm like, just buy the gun if you want the gun. He's like, no, it has to be tied to that. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't get it. <laughs> so Can we celebrate every day? <laughs> right. And then I'm a big fan of costume jewelry too. Okay. Because I'm a How big... How do you mix and match that Z? That's always been a thing for me. I'm a fan of those hero pieces and I just leave them on. You, you have your own style about your jewelry that I love, you're very minimal and very classic. Mm -hmm. So all of your pieces are very dainty, mm -hmm. um, other than the piece that you're wearing today, which I really love, which is a designer staple, a designer classic. This is a Vivian Westwood oh. classic piece, which I adore and love so much. And it's dressed with uh, the corset look that she has been known for for decades, mm -hmm. right? So um, that piece I love, on, I, I love on you so much, so. Thank you. This is the first fashion piece I've bought in years. Because I always feel like I'm not sure about these pieces. And what do you do with them? It feels very, they make me uncomfortable, honestly. I don't know why. It's like I don't know how to play with those. And so I just, just give me my real stuff and then I let, let everything else. Nah. Do you feel like it's too much attention? Hmm. Well, let's just dive right in. Let's dive right in. Do you feel like it's too much attention? I don't know. Maybe also, I think that I have a thing with quality. Why would I spend my money on something that I know isn't going to last? So I think there's a quality thing in my head. But I think that if you're wanting to stay stylish and in, you know, in vogue, sometimes you have to be willing to like, oh, this is a disposable piece. And maybe that's not how I think with jewelry. I don't think of them being disposable. I still, there are certain pieces that are timeless, like cocktail rings, mm -hmm. right? That I necessarily may not be able to afford a three carat Cartier cocktail ring yet, mm -hmm. but I will buy it in a costume high quality piece. So then it's with me until I buy the real thing. Oh. So I actually like another fashion tip, if you want a fashion tip, because there are a lot of times we want to learn if we are going to wear something. That's true. Right? Like, am, am I, I going to like it? Like, Am I a loafer girl? <laughs> loafers are so in right now. Everybody's like killing the loafer game. Prada came out with the loafers, whatever, two years ago, two seasons ago, that they just blew up on Instagram. Everybody's wearing loafers these days. And I was like, before I invest in a six, six or $700 Prada loafer piece, I want to test it out whether this is something I like. Mm -hmm. So I went online, went to Nordstrom Rack, and I was like, okay, what's a high quality loafer that I can buy and then I can resell, mm -hmm. still designer. And I ended up getting a pair of loafers, Stuart Weissman loafers that I wore a couple times. And I was like, it's just really not my thing. Okay, I can't do it. No. I felt like an old man going to the library and like I needed to, you know, start smoking the, what a is cigar? that thing? Oh, a pipe. A, you pipe. Want a pipe. Yeah. 
I'm like, I know the word in Russian, trupka. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I what you what meant. I got the hand moving. So I started like, I, I, I thought that I'm going to start walking funny, you know? So if you want to figure out if something is your thing, buy a, a placeholder piece. I if you like that. it, mm -hmm, upgrade. It. If you don't like it, if you bought a high quality piece, you can resell it on Poshmark, which I am a Poshmark queen. I buy a lot of things on Poshmark because fashion is second biggest polluter in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's important to me that I, that I feel a sense of responsibility when I buy these things. So, and then you can upgrade mm -hmm. and you can be like, okay, cool. This cocktail ring that is a yellow um, zirconium is going to be my upgrade piece when I am able to celebrate another big milestone in my life. Yeah. So that's a big suggestion for me on jewelry and on um, on placeholder pieces to get all together because I think it's just such a good hack. That is a good one. I like it. I, I didn't really ever think of applying that, but uh, that makes sense to me. I think I placeholder on people. I watch what other people wear and I'm, and I'm pretty good at, would I do it? Would I not do it? And oh. then, so I'm watching, for instance, you, I watch you a lot and I enjoy the variety that you do. What's your least favorite thing that I wear? Your baggy pants that you want me to wear. The jeans. I'm just like, oh, why is she wearing those? And, and you look cute, but I'm like, but why? And then you're like, you need to do it. And I'm just like, I can't do it. She hasn't crossed the threshold. I yet. will do it. I swear to you, Z, I'm going to buy a pair of baggy pants. Charles Pluggers. <laughs> It'll be okay. It's because my little kitty does not like being constrained. Do you have a wild cat in there? that needs? Oh, help? yeah. She needs room. Oh, okay. You know, I don't <laughs> just like being, I don't like being squished in there. That's why I love dresses. It's, they're so freeing. People, you know, people have told me, how can you wear a dress all the time? It just feels so uncomfortable. Like, you know, it's comfortable. I, I like my, I like my hoo-ha to have some I air. I love it. She's like, oh yeah, that feels I good. Breathe. <laughs> and I mean, if it's cold, then you wear a long dress. If it's warm, you wear a short dress. If it's, you can move your legs in any way, you know, you just, they're so comfortable to me. I would wear them all the time. It's also something that not a lot of women think about, but I've heard this in my girlfriend circles is um, getting a lot of UTIs from really tight clothes. Oh, so yeah. if you're wearing leggings and you're sweating in that environment and it's, you know, you're sweating in that environment for or like your better description, for lack of better description, you're sweating in your pants, girl, for um, lack of better description. If your kitty is a little bit wet, what? Oh, <laughs> girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so, or like your jeans are too tight because you are not buying your size, which I can go on another whole rant. And about. what is jean size? I hate jeans. I'm like, am I, uh, I literally, when I order jeans, I order four sizes because they lie like, oh yeah, they're all by a size now. And I'm like, well, and what size is that? Because these aren't real inches. Why can men just go to the store and say, oh, I'm a 33, 34 and all the 33, 34 is fit the same. And then I have to order four different ones. I also order three different sizes in trousers. It's bullshit. It is BS. Bullshit. And if you are so focused and if you're four or six or an eight or whatever, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I can range four sizes. It just doesn't, I'm like, I never know. So I, I wear six in some trousers and in some, and in some, like in jeans, I can be a 29 and a 25. Explain that it to me. It doesn't make sense. It's like, but are we really doing these by real measurements? Because how could that be possible? I didn't grow four inches. So always order two sizes and don't be disappointed if they don't fit. Yeah, it's okay. Jeans are the only thing that I don't have any rules about. Like my shoes always have to be designer. That is 100% the foundation on all the shoes because I can resole them. I can resell them. Oh, yeah. They're going to hold their value and they're a lot more comfortable. Also, in case you don't know and you think designer is ridiculous because like, why would you spend that much money on something that's disposable? You can send your designer shoes back to the designer and they'll refurb them. So when I have favorite pairs, I literally will order immediately the, uh, I don't know what this is called. I'm sorry, but the leather on the back part of your heel because they still have it in stock. It's on the first run, right? And they'll send it to you. And then you can just take it to your cobbler and they'll re, re even reheal your shoes. That is an amazing yeah, I love tip. it. You should see how many squares of uh, leather I have in, in my shoe storage. So if you go to the designer 
website so, or do you have to reach out to them separately? I need this information, guys. This is this is valuable stuff right here. I'm going to be right <laughs> sit down. So for me, back to feels, creating relationships with the people that I spend money with is super important. So if I'm going to buy a pair of shoes, I always go back to my same girl at Louboutin. I have a Louboutin girl. I have a Jimmy Choo guy. I have a Neiman's guy. I have a Nordstrom's guy. And if they have it, then I'm always going to buy from them because that way when, when I do need something, they're so willing to take care of me and they'll go above and beyond. I remember one time I bought a pair of designer shoes from my Nordstrom's guy who I absolutely love. Shout out to Brandon. He's the What's best. Up, um, and I bought a pair of Pradas that they were custom. They like had my initials on them on the bottom, but they were so uncomfortable. I don't, I don't know why it wasn't like the other pairs that I had bought. I wore them out. I was like, maybe they just need to get broken in and they just would not become more comfortable. They took them back worn. They're like, it's okay. And I'm like, when you will align with your salesperson and they know that you care about them and you take care of them, they'll take care of you too. I couldn't believe, like literally just took them back. Your salespeople, your stylist. So when I was styling a lot more, mm -hmm. I would look for clients that weren't even on contract mm -hmm. with me. Cause I'm like, oh, I, I know that you would love this because I know your pillar is, you know, feathers. Yeah. So when I see something feather, I'll take a picture and I'll send it to you. I'm like, hey, do you like this? Are you vibing with that? I don't really care if you're in a contract with me, but I just care that you are feeling your best and looking your best. Yeah, just give. The universe will take care of the rest. Giving and giving are one, or giving and receiving are one and the same to me. And I think that so often people think about, well, I gave this and I gave that, and what have I gotten in return? Don't worry about it. If you have the ability to give, then keep giving because the more that you give, the bigger your cup is and the more that comes to you. It might not come from the same hand. Don't look to, don't look to get where you give. That's not your problem. It's transactional. About. Yes, that's transactional. It's Let transactional. the universe do it for you. Because if you're giving out of the kindness of your heart and the excitement and the love and the connection, you're always taken care of. You know, what's really amazing to me. I noticed this in business. Mm -hmm. I could be working a lot on one project and totally not really paying attention to this project, but that's the project that money is going to come through in order to support this project. Mm -hmm. I've, um, I've really surrendered the transactional nature of business. If I work on one thing, this is what's going to pay off. If I just keep working, if I just keep creating, I keep manifesting. It will come back from another door to me. It, it's, yeah. it's actually incredible how that works. It is incredible. And once you are able to prove it to yourself in air quotes, like once you've seen the proof is in the pudding, then you can start to rely and trust on trust that for me, I'm very much a proof girl. I'm like, it talks cheap. Let me see. Show me. And so I kind of took that MO with the universe too. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll follow, but you're going to have to show me because if I don't get the proof to back it up, then I'm going to do it my way. Right. I'm not saying it's the right way, but that's how I think I need to see it. And once I really experienced that for myself, it gave me a whole nother level of peace. Like I don't have to keep track of this stuff. Just give it to the universe and I'll be good. I love it. You're universe, like, God, whoever. You what? I'm a go with the flow girl, but when, when does the flow start? <laughs> What time, what time are we getting to the flow? Yeah. Are there snacks when we go with the flow? And are we snacks when we get there? <laughs> and I'm, uh, I've already ordered all of the snacks. I know your favorite thing. It's waiting for you, girl. <laughs> I love Alicia. Alicia is the flow. Uh, oh, you're sweet. <laughs> when it comes to snacks and donuts, Alicia oh, sure. is the flow. I'm like, please let me uh, bring some snacks. Is there something in fashion that we haven't covered yet that we're dying to talk about? Ooh, Maybe sum it up a little? We talked about a lot. We really did. I think the probably the most important thing for me in fashion was to remember and always appreciate that this is a journey and you're creating. This is an opportunity. It's not a chore to dress yourself. It's we're so blessed in the world that we live in today that we really get to pick clothes that show who we are. It's not about having to protect ourselves anymore, you know, so enjoy the process, enjoy learning, enjoy the mistakes. It doesn't matter if you look back at it as a mistake. It's not really a mistake. You're just, oh, you mean those leggings are not a mistake? No, that's like, that's cute, man. You were growing, right? You had to, you had to experience it. And so if you didn't try, how would you know? I love what you said because inadvertently you're saying that when you are trying new things in fashion, when you're dressing yourself and you're not treating it as a chore, fashion becomes 
a, a language of self-love mm-hmm. language becomes a link it fashion becomes a language of self-care fashion becomes a language of self-expression self-respect yes i'm gonna treat myself i'm gonna love myself enough to get ready i'm gonna love myself enough to buy something new for myself i'm gonna treat myself enough to organize my closet where i do feel good and express in all of the pieces that i wear yeah and all those fashion risks that we take yeah Right. Like it's just another way of challenging yourself to be more courageous and more more bold. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that. Somebody taught me once, a wise woman taught me that life is just like your wardrobe. Just try it on. And if you don't like it anymore, take it off. That's life it just summed up being a person. You just nailed this because I tried on being a stylist mm-hmm. in LA and I launched my fashion course, my style course. I worked with a couple of celebrities. Can't say who they are, but they have hella good style on Instagram. Just saying. Um, you're welcome. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I wore that hat for about six, seven months. And yeah, that was fast fashion for you. It's time it to fast go. Fashion for me. And I was like, I do not like this. Yeah. I do, I do not like, or I'm just done. It was fun. It was fun to wear for a night out. So actually I just polished my style so much Mm -hmm. and I just really liked what I was creating. I also noticed that my artist wasn't willing to co-create with the other person. Oh, that's a huge cue. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I didn't like, I can do it for some of my really closest friends that I love. I still have some fashion contracts that come back to me because they want a new capsule, but I became so inflexible in what I liked. Oh yeah. That you couldn't, you couldn't, I couldn't co-create with a person. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't give a shit that you like this. I don't like this. This doesn't look good on you. And that's I'm like, the hard thing. If it doesn't look good on them in your perspective, so that I, I could see how hard that would be. My artist took a really strong stance and whether it was ego or whatever, she became unwilling to co-create with that person because I was like, that's just playing wrong. <laughs> I don't like it. I do not like this. This is plain like wrong. It. This is not art. This is like, it is just plain wrong for Zalata. Exactly. For her, it's her playing. And so we have to honor that. Exactly. And that's when I was like, okay, I think I'm done. This was a short stint. Yeah, it was a party dress. You tried on in time to take the party dress off. (laughs) I also started in fashion about a decade ago. I did um, Milan Fashion Week, Hong Kong Fashion Week, um, Moscow Fashion Week. I worked for a designer organizing fashion weeks and putting on the shows. It was a dream job. I can't even imagine. But the industry was so harsh. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So difficult. You almost become not human because you start treating people like hangers. Oh, like clothes horses. Clothes horses. Like you're picking out models, not based on how beautiful and loving or kind or soulful or thoughtful she is. You're like, are you skinny enough or good enough or tall enough to wear this dress? Mm. Or uh, he was a fur designer. Mm -hmm. So the fur designer, your model has to be extremely thin Mm -hmm. and extremely tall. Mm, so the item is bulky exactly because the item is large so but you can't explain to that woman why you didn't choose her Mm -hmm. because she internalized everything about not being chosen and felt horrible about herself and i'll never forget the casting this was in russia and it's you know russians are hardcore and this was like one of those really hardcore days post-production we had a really long day it was a 14 hour day we're choosing models and looks on the runway all day and i and i closed the portfolio and i was walking out of the place and the girl was crying and i was like she just needs to suck it up like i just was noticing myself getting harder and i caught myself and i was like oh this is not who you are. Yeah. Don't let this industry do this to you because your nature is soft and gentle and kind and giving. And I, we get to, I get to keep that. I work to keep that. And my styling stint now also kind of reminded me of that. And I was like, mm. you yeah, know, it's not good for you. It was, it just became more about clothes than it became about individuality. Yeah. So whatever career you choose, whatever path you choose, remember who you are and don't let the industry harden you, even if it, even that's the industry that, that you chose. Yeah. So remember your truth. Okay. So I have one last tip for all the ladies out there. Give me all the tips. Girl, oh, I just want to swear. the tip. Just, just a tip. A little tip. <laughs> uh, okay. Last tip then. If there is an item in your closet that you pull out and you don't have a strong positive feel towards, give it away. Just give it away. Don't keep it. I know so many women that keep clothes because it makes them feel good to have more. 
It's not about having more. It's about loving what you have. So I would say, ladies, if you'll take one thing away from this, go home, set some time aside, go to your closet and just go through each piece. Does it make me feel good? If I put this on now, do I feel good in it? And if the answer is no, there's someone that could wear it that it could make them feel good. Take out all those pieces and I would suggest a bottle of wine at the end and look at them. You know, before you give them away, think about the memories you had in them, enjoy them and then wish them well for someone else. That's what I like to do. I love that piece of advice. When I was doing the styling, I noticed that a lot of women want to keep all of these pieces in their wardrobe because it makes them feel in abundance. Mm -hmm. And it's actually an expression of lack mindset. You're holding on to something that needs to go just because you think you'll have more by having stuff. And if you let it go, then you make room for the new. And it's such a good metaphor for life. Just you have to let those things go. If they've worked through your, your process, you've done what you needed to do with them, make room for new. Also, this is super important. If you are looking to set a new standard in your life, Mm -hmm. start with your wardrobe. So don't allow, oh, this is almost fitting. This is almost great. Or I got this on sale into your life. I'll ill fit again. Because it breeds mediocrity in other areas of your life. Mm. So I took this lesson for myself through my closet where I was like, I don't accept lesser standard than beautiful on me, fits perfectly, it's exactly how I love it. Whether it's $75, $5 or $750 or $7,000, it doesn't matter how much it costs. I couldn't agree more. And okay, can I have one more last tip? Because you, you reminded me. Yeah, I'm, I'm st- one more, one more last. Still tip. on a rant. Yes. How do we say that? <laughs> um, still on a rant about that. <laughs> like uh, get your clothes altered. Get your clothes altered. It's yes. the best 10% investment that you will make in your clothes. I pretty much every single piece you see me in has been altered because if the piece is shows you, then whose is it? So if you're not willing to spend that 10% and that's what I budget in, it's like whatever the piece costs, add 10% for alterations. And then when you slip it on and it feels like a glove, it's just like, oh, I'm in heaven. You know, it's buttery smooth. It fits my body perfectly. There's nothing that makes me happier than feeling like this is me. Whereas when I put something on and it's like, oh, well, if I just probably have to adjust just a little minor adjustment all night. I'll be tugging at it. Come on. Are you really enjoying your evening if you're constantly adjusting yourself? No. So spend the 10% on uh, find yourself a good alterations person and stick with them. Because also once they know your body, they can do you in a snap and everything turns out perfect. Right. And take good care of them. I agree with you. And also a really big thing on fashion is fabric. It doesn't matter Mm -hmm. how good your tailor is. If your fabric is garbage. Yeah, if you don't bring them good quality. They can't really do anything about it. But how often do we buy pieces that are like heavily made of like made of polyester? And I'm like, you're going to wear that piece twice and then it's going to be trash. It's going to lose its structure. It's going to lose its fit. Your tailor is not going to be able to help you when that piece is not made of high quality fabric. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean expensive. It means high quality. Fabric. It means high quality fabric. So paying attention. What are your favorite fabrics? And then we've really got to wrap this up. We know all these ladies are loving these fashion tips, but we only have so much time. Never stop. We're just going to talk about You're going to have to drag me away by my tool, <laughs> by my tool. By your tool. Dress. <laughs> yes. I'm like, I am trying to look like black swan. Uh, Girl, you nailed it. Also like a real Levine punk rock black swan. Mm. What's mm. up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm feeling the vibe. I told you, feels. You're gonna, have to, dra- feels. You're gonna have to drag me away. <laughs> Cut her mic. We're done. <laughs> Cut. I'm just kidding. Finish what you were saying, and then we'll say goodbye. My favorite fabric is um, I love silks, mm-hmm. but I also love silk blends. Mm. So sometimes silk by itself is very delicate. gentle and very delicate. So anything with a silk blend um, is a good idea. I love a good cashmere um, sweater for the winter. You truly just need one or one cashmere scarf. Um, cashmere blends are also a really good idea for some additional warmth that's not that's not super, super warm. So those are like my two favorites. Like I feel really good in them and I always feel like just hugged and loved Mm -hmm. just feel rich Mm -hmm. rich in cashmere girl i will like i could not believe the first time that i put on a quality garment i was 32 and it was at millie in new york i finally realized the difference between wow, just regular clothes and then clothes that you invest in and when i put the dress on because of course it was a dress i was like this is heavy like the dress is heavy. 
I can feel that this is a good material. And I couldn't look back from there because it feels completely different than the flimsy, trashy stuff I was wearing before that it was fast fashion. It wasn't quality keeping your closet forever. And I didn't know that there was actually a difference. And sometimes it's not even that they're like hardcore thick material or thick fabric. When a fashion house like if Saint Laurent cuts a silk slip dress because of the fabric and the cut, and you can just be like, okay, well, this is a simple dress. Why does this cost six or seven hundred dollars? But then when you buy other silk pe- silk dress pieces from fast fashion, and then you have your if Saint Laurent dress, you needed one of those yeah. for the price of the you know six seven whatever eighty dollar ones. You know the difference. So just invest in yourself, invest in these pieces, and you're gonna feel like a million dollars. I agree. <laughs> All right, girl. This was probably one of my favorites that we've done because I love learning from you in this this area. So beautiful. I think we nailed it. Thank you, ladies, for listening. Yeah, Lots of let us know your thoughts. If I would be so open to hearing fashion tips, like what are you, what are you wearing? What are you loving? What are you vibing on? Hot or not? I would love to see some pictures from people. I think it would be great to get Z's take on them. Yeah. Leave your comments below. Favorite yep. designers, favorite pieces, and we'll see you next time.